Hey there. How y'all doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, uh, been a, a busy week for me, but, uh, I'm glad to be here with you today. And, uh, I hope you've had a busy week also, but also productive. So, anyway, my sermon today, Children of God, is, uh, based on the book of Romans, chapter 8. Verses 12 through 17. So let's read our scripture and then we'll get into the message. So it begins, well, it's like in the middle of a, you know, disc, or a, a statement by the Apostle Paul. He says, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. So here ends today's reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. That's you. Thanks be to God. Oh, that's me too. I'm adopted too. Okay, so disclaimer. Today we have a very introspective sermon filled with many rhetorical questions. But, you know, you're watching it on video. You can answer out loud if you want. All right, go ahead. Are you ready for them? Oh, that was our first question. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So, first question, next question. Do you live by the flesh? Or the spirit? What do you feed more? The flesh or the spirit? Now I'm not saying you should stop eating food, but do you pay more attention to the food or drink or substances that you put into your physical body than you, than the care that you give to your spirit? Let's find out. How often do you pray? How often do you read scriptures and dig into them so that you can fully understand what you've read by, by looking up commentaries on the scripture or getting a study Bible with notes and pass on the passages that are there? How often do you listen to Christian radio and fill yourself with some some uplifting news. Now, let's dig into this today, beginning with the question, how often do you pray? So, do you give thanks before you have a meal? And a snack? And a cup of coffee? Do you pray when you hear a siren from an emergency vehicle? Not just the one pulling you over. Not, oh Lord, please don't let me get a ticket. Not that prayer, but you can pray that one too. But pray for the emergency workers. Pray for the people that they are going to help. And yeah, it's even help when they're pulling somebody over for speeding, you know, because it's for our own safety. How about when you drive past a hospital? a nursing home, or even a funeral home. Do you pray for those in those facilities that are suffering with pain, illness, dementia, or grief and sorrow? Do you lift yourself up in prayer, asking God for direction, patience, or wisdom? Or maybe for, for God to have patience with you. Now, I have to admit, I don't stop to pray at 
each of these opportunities, but there's nothing stopping me from taking on a new spiritual practice. As long as I don't close my eyes and bow my head while I'm driving past one of the facilities I mentioned, I think I can handle adding more opportunities for prayer in my life. Also, admittedly, I don't pray for myself as often as I should. I remember to pray for the many people who are on our prayer list each week, but I do need to remember to pray for myself as I go about life each and every day. Now, obviously, I read scriptures in Bible study and in sermon preparation, and that takes several hours each week. But I know that I could add a daily devotion. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Like this one that we have available at our churches. I know I could add that and include it in my, my spiritual discipline. Because it's good to begin each day grounded in God's Word, or to end each day grounded in God's Word, too. Now, I also try to fill my environment with positivity by listening to Christian radio. And I also, I also listen to Mayville's Great 98 because they have my favorite DJ in the whole world playing tunes from back in my day. Hi, Meg. Love you, hon. And a couple of times a week, I even listen to a short news podcast. But I try to stay away from all of the negativity that's broadcast every day. I'm admittedly a very empathetic person. And it's simply too draining on my spirit to be bombarded with the sadness and the pain from listening to the news. So I choose to protect myself by limiting my exposure to the grief found around the world and that's reported every day in the news. Helping people close to me in dealing with their own griefs is a far better way for me to spend my spiritual energy. And it brings me fulfillment as well as because I feel like I'm helping. Whereas there's not much I can do with other places in the world other than offer my prayers for peace. And I understand that not everyone is like me and they feel a need to know what's going on in the far reaches of the world and I'm glad that they find fulfillment in that. I'll continue to pray for peace in the world while doing my best to fulfill God's call in my life to the best of my ability. After all, that's what we all should be doing. Now that I have highlighted some ways to feed our spirits, would you like to know why we should feed our spirits? Yeah? I can't hear you. Good. I'm, I'm sure you're saying yeah. Be, because um, that's the rest of the sermon, so that's what you're going to get. So, if I were to ask the question, how many of you are adopted? <clears throat> you might all be surprised by the answer. See, even if most of us were raised by the family of our birth, according to our scripture reading today, all believers who are led by the Spirit of God, have been adopted into the family of God. This is some beautiful news. It doesn't matter whether we're born into an Israelite family or an American family, a high society family or a poor family, a church-going family or an atheist family. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive the Holy Spirit as our guide, we are formally adopted into the family of God for all eternity. Praise God! 
And as adopted children of God, shouldn't we be trying to get to know everything we possibly can know about the family we've been adopted into? Shouldn't we ask God questions and dig into finding those answers? And shouldn't we celebrate our adoption by inviting others to join our family? You know, there's plenty of room at the table. We have an amazing family of believers, both near and far, to the far reaches of the world. And we should seek out ways to deepen our faith and extend our service and share our blessings with them all. So I invite you now to please join me in a prayer as we lift this up to God. Let us pray. Lord God, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord God, as we give you thanks and praise for welcoming us as adopted members of your family, we also seek your blessings on the mission and ministry of the church family that you've blessed us to be a part of. We seek guidance to recognize areas where we may be of service. And we seek the bravery to be led by you. Our numbers may be few, but our spirits are willing. So stir in us an awakening that brings new life to our corner of your earthly kingdom. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I thank you for joining me today. I pray for blessings on you and your life. And until we meet again, God be with you. Amen. <laughs>